<laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Cheryl Richardson. Um, I'm hoping that this time, I think this is going to work a little bit better. We're outside. We don't have as much light because it's sort of a rainy day, mm -hmm. but um, it was really important uh, what Kristen just went through. So I'm actually going to ask her to do it again. Before I do that, can you just um, do me a favor and give me a comment or a thumbs up so I know that you're able to see this? Okay, it looks like it's coming through. Great. Yeah, just let us know. Terry, let me know that you're able to see this before we continue. That would be terrific. Excellent. Yay. All right, great. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> That's terrific. Thanks, Terry. Great. Okay, so before we, um, before we lost signal, <laughs> I was going to say power, but we didn't lose power. Um, Kristen gave this great little presentation. This particular, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to talk about Animal Rescue 911. What do you do when you find an animal, an injured animal, or an animal that maybe has been, you know, orphaned, left, uh, left alone? What do you do? How do you pick them up? Do you pick them up? What's the, you know, where do you take them? What's the best mm -hmm. thing that you can do? And Kristen's got some great advice about that. And then we're going to see a few of their ambassador animals. And these are animals or birds that were not able to be returned to the wild. Um, here at the Center for Wildlife, which is where we are. I forgot to say that in the, on this video. We're at the Center for Wildlife in Cape Nettick, Maine. Um, here, they take in over 2,000 animals a year, mm -hmm. and they do, they really perform miracles. And for the most part, they do their very best to return animals and birds to the wild. They can't always do that. And then sometimes they retain certain animals as ambassadors to teach people, to give them good lives, mm -hmm. and then to teach people about wildlife so that they'll take good care of um, the, what they find in nature. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, so you're going to get to see some of the ambassador animals, and then we'll take some of your questions uh, about just caring for wildlife, because mm -hmm. I know we all tend to come across a turtle or a bird or whatever. Hi, Donna. I'm glad mm -hmm. you're here, and Lisa and Laura. I'm glad you're all here. So, Kristen, can we start? I'm going to turn the camera to you and just hi. say hi to everybody. Hi, hi, everyone. I'm the executive director at Center for Wildlife. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, can you um, – so can you just – let people know, what do we need to have like in our car mm -hmm. in order to best handle an animal or a bird that we might find on the side of the road? Right. And so we are sharing that, uh, yes, about 50, 51% of the animals that come to us um, have been hit by cars or found in the road. Mm -hmm. So a good um, kind of general rule is that if you can approach a wild animal um, and it doesn't run away or fly away or, or try to get away from you, it needs help. And, and many times it's very obvious when an animal is struggling on the side of the road or has like a wound or, you know, can't balance itself, mm -hmm. that it definitely needs um, help. So does that mean that if an animal does fly away or does run away that you should leave it alone? Um, in that case, I would probably call a wildlife rehabilitator okay. and kind of describe the situation. There's a lot of questions we can ask okay. about age or circumstance or how they're holding their wings. Are they squinting an eye? Yep. So sometimes they might, just like us, you know, if we had a sprained ankle or something, we might be able to limp off the trail so that we can get somewhere. But it doesn't necessarily mean um, that they don't need help completely. But it's just when it's very obvious that you need sure. to take action is when they um, don't try to get away from you. And the, the one exception, which we can get into when we show our young little friend here, yeah. is um, during nesting season, uh, many wild animals are just um, birds can't fly when they first come onto the nest and leave their nest. They're building up flight muscles. They are gaining coordination. So in those cases, or young squirrels, when they first leave, um, they're very curious and they might kind of walk up to someone and not run away. Mm -hmm. Or we've heard people say that, um, you know, squirrels have climbed up their jeans or something. Mm -hmm. So um, so during nesting season, you want to be aware about whether it's a young animal because we don't want to intervene and take them out of nature or away from their family if nothing's wrong. So, so if somebody finds a baby bird on the grass, let's say in their lawn, mm -hmm. they shouldn't touch them. Right. I think the best thing to do is, you know, look for an obvious, and when we say obvious injury, it's like if you're seeing blood, if they can't stand or hop, if 
if something's broken or mm-hmm. hanging. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is nesting season, and it mm-hmm. goes from April through uh, the end of September, October, and okay. just um, give give good space and watch for parents. And if parents are coming down to the ground, it's totally normal and part of their development, um, especially if they have feathers. If yeah. they're completely naked mm-hmm. and they're on the ground in the middle of the grass, um, that's way too young to have left the nest, so something happened there yeah. but if they if they look like mm-hmm. a, um, an older bird or they they're fully yeah. feathered um, they're just kind of uh, young and not running away from you because they're yeah. just inexperienced um, that would be the difference. yeah and if they are naked um, I know I've found like mm-hmm. little pink babies before and mm-hmm. put them back in the nest exactly and the mother has come yes. and the mother has taken care of them yes. contrary to what most people think right, right? so that's so important Cheryl uh, that is an old um, a myth I don't want to say old wives tales because mm-hmm. wives get blamed for <laughs> giving misinformation but mm-hmm. it was a myth that probably helped um, young you know young people not go out and touch and mess with wildlife mm-hmm. but um, besides our turkey vultures Um, birds do not have a great sense of smell and even if they're mammal moms um, they spent you know all of winter getting themselves ready to be able to give birth Um, they put a lot of time and effort into making their nest Mm -hmm. and incubating their eggs so they will not reject a baby because of of smell of humans okay great Mm -hmm. great awesome yeah so yes so some of the things we should have in our car so these are Um, These are the tools that you want to have, the things you want to have in your vehicle so that you can take care of animals. Go ahead. Yep. And we say um, just having this kit ready is your 50% of the way there because Mm -hmm. if you see an injured animal on the side of the road, um, you're often frantic. They might look like they're in really bad shape and you're like, what do I do? But Mm -hmm. you get your kit out. So just keep this in your trunk. These are um, just work gloves, the kind with the leather on the outside are great um welding gloves i was saying are great if you Mm -hmm. feel like you really want to go into (laughs) big rescues um but even just these if an animal is debilitated a pair of gardening gloves like this and a towel are going to keep you um really safe from most uh wildlife and the towel is what to sort of cover the animal and pick them up yeah and we can demonstrate that sarah can help um demonstrate that with ophelia in in a second um but the towel is um, we have to put ourselves in the frame of mind of a wild animal so we look like uh, giant grizzly bears to wild animals Mm -hmm. Um, although we might be saying we're just gonna save you we only want to help you they do not hear that or understand that so they're in fight-or-flight mode Mm -hmm. and they um, want to get away from us so um, just covering that animal's head Mm -hmm. so they can't see what's going on and they can't see this giant predator (laughs) hovering over them um, works wonders. I remember, I have to say, I remember when my cat Poupon was sick Mm -hmm. and we brought a vet to the house because he did not like the vets at all. Um, And he was, he was furious. Like he just, Mm -hmm. but the minute she put a blanket over his head, he calmed right down. And Mm -hmm. boy, I thought I had never, I never knew that that was so important, like such an act of self care for an animal mm-hmm. to cover their head so that mm-hmm. they they don't see you and they're they don't they're not as frightened. Right. Great. So you're gonna have the gloves, the so towel. You have the gloves, the towel, and then um, this is you can buy these um, I cardboard love this. boxes. Yes. Look at um, this. Cardboard carriers at Petco. Um, they actually flatten so you can keep it flat in your trunk. It doesn't yep. take up a lot of room. <laughs> there we and go. And then you can just pop it right back up together. They're pretty cheap. I think they're like twenty dollars. Awesome. Um, cardboard is definitely the safest material for a wild animal. They can't thrash break feathers um, or injure themselves against that soft cardboard so oh good safe so in there. so a hard like a, a metal cage or even like a cat car- like a plastic carrier or something could mm-hmm. be damaging to an animal yeah they can hurt themselves depending know. on what species they are how high strung they are how mm-hmm. afraid they are yep. so and people um, well-meaning people sometimes will bring us uh, birds that they just put in their old um, pet bird cage because they had that available and um, they have broken feathers. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it too, they're completely exposed in a wire cage. So again, yes. they're seeing predators. Yes. Okay, um, great. And then if you don't have a pet co near you, um, this is just a Tupperware, Rubbermaid Tupperware container with mm-hmm. holes, obviously for breathing, um, poked out and you can keep something great. like this in your car too. Great, so. great. That's your Rescue 101 kit. Good, good, good. <laughs> so Sarah was going to show us yeah, what's she going to do. Oh, we're yeah. going to see. We'll see if we can get Ophelia. Actually, I may use this to okay. give an example of how you can get them in. Yeah. 
so I don't know. So we're going to get, so Ophelia is, yeah, we're going to turn this. Stay with me, everybody. We're going to turn this so that you can see Sarah. Oops, hang in there. There we go. Can you see yourself there? Yeah. Oh, look at that. So Ophelia is um, a non-releasable opossum. She came to us um, after she was hand reared. But many times opossums will be animals that you find mm -hmm. um, that have been hit by cars. Um, they're slow. They don't have very good eyesight. Um, and so, uh, and also their response to stress is to pass out. And so we want to make sure that um, not only the animal is safe, but that humans are safe. And that's a really big deal. So many times what will happen is we'll go and the animal may be laying there and you'll go to help them. And they freak out because you now have, you know, a, a, a predator coming at them. And so sure. they'll react. Or the flip side of that, and we've had this, police officers have come up and come in and said, I have an owl in my car. And we go, great, bring it in. And they go, no, it's in my car. Oh, and geez. it's because they thought it was unconscious. They put it in the car without putting it into a box. And then it wakes up and then you're in trouble. So a good example of why you need to carry a box and also why you need to protect yourself. So I'm gonna let Ophelia out. Um, she is completely healthy. Uh, so she may move a little bit more than um, an injured opossum, but the idea behind it is the same. Mm -hmm. She also is getting fish treats after this, so even though she's going to be like, what are you doing to me? She knows that she's doing it to help educate for the rest of her mm -hmm. ambassador friends. So the there. first, um, I'm going to use, my preference in my car is the welding gloves. Um, that's just me. That's because you're probably picking up big well, animals. I pick up large, yeah, exactly. Yes. My poor kids. <laughs> Mom, not again. I'm like, it's okay. Um, this is so why I love I these people because they take the towel. animals. Yes. Um, and the towel is actually, if you don't have a towel, another thing you can do is like if you have your shirt or your mm -hmm. sweatshirt um, or blanket. a blanket mm -hmm. or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, you can make do right there. But right. it's a really important part of covering their head. It's just like if you're in a room and the lights go out, the first thing you do is freeze. Um, and so that's sort of what happens with that. So Miss Ophelia, I'm going to let should out. Should I move or stay here? No, you can I stay. Don't you should her. be good. Okay, good. Hi, oh, oh are you going to come out? Oh my God, she people, says, well, she's adorable. I don't know if I want you now. She's you adorable. She said, I don't want to be on TV. <laughs> I don't want to be on TV. Come on. It's okay. Are we going to do it? Come on, Ophelia. You Hi, want to take Angel. off the top? Oh. <laughs> you can take off the top. So it's also, if I take this off, sometimes that will help her decide. Hi. That's another good point about just transporting too. So keeping keeping the um, animal covered, but also keeping the radio off. Mm -hmm. And if you have kids or dogs or other animals in the car, you want to try to keep everyone as <laughs> quiet as possible. That's why I wear the big gloves. <laughs> yeah. So another thing with opossums to remember is that they're all, I'm not going to say they're all bark and no bite, but it's a lot of posturing and okay. a lot of noise yeah. um, out front, which is good because if I were an animal that was coming to eat her, that would frighten me away. Yeah. And I would leave them alone. Yeah. Oh, if you do. She's just perfect to show. Yeah, she Hi. Is. Her teeth and Are you yeah. a good girl? <laughs> You're going to get fish treats. Are you excited? <laughs> you excited? She says, no, not really. How yeah. about we come out this way? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you on the table so that I can show them. Okay. okay. I know. Yeah, we're gonna go right here. Okay. Wow, good girl. Look at her. So if you were to come across an opossum, more than likely they'll be either staggering um, because they have head trauma mm -hmm. um, or they'll just be laying there. The first thing you do is you put on your gloves. Well, first thing you do is put on the blinker on your car to make sure everyone's <laughs> safe. And then you're gonna come up and you're gonna approach them, preferably from behind. You simply toss this over. Oh, nice job, Sarah. Okay. Yes. And then immediately don't take ready. the towel <laughs> off. Don't do anything. You can put the entire thing into the box. Close the box. She's so mad. Fish treats, yeah. Ophie. Fish treats. <laughs> now, the other thing is that they will go into fight or flight. So even you'll have a deer if they've been hit by a car and they have a broken leg, they'll run off into the woods because their adrenaline is pumping. As soon as they're in a quiet, safe place, they're able to relax and let go. Um, and so many times people will bring animals in and say, they're fine, they're fine, they're fine. Um, but then when we let them sit inside, their systems 
tend to let go and shut down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that trauma will then um, take so, over and, yeah. and they actually pass away mm -hmm. even before we can um, treat them. Mm -hmm. So from here, the other thing, when if you bring an animal in like this, please don't open the box in as you come in to the office. We know that you're excited and that you want to share with us what's going on, but too often birds have flown out or opossums have jumped out or, you know, whatever else. So it, keep it in the box and we can take pictures and send them to you or do whatever else, but it's really worth just leaving it be. So see, she's already calmed down and yeah. she's no longer upset. Yes, yes. So that is ideal. So porcupine is the only difference that you wouldn't do that with. You wouldn't take a towel mm -hmm. and cover a porcupine because their quills will stick into the towel. Mm -hmm. So many times with porcupines, you can simply turn this box on the edge and you can sort of, they're very slow, you can sort of maneuver them oh, into the box great. and then flip it back up again. But never ever put a blanket or a towel on a porcupine mm -hmm. because then when you take the towel off, it hurts them. It's like pulling a bunch of hair out of your head. And this is, yeah. this is good, a good point. So they're kind of like list, like squirrels, you know, who you yeah, would use. Yeah, squirrels, this opossums. You can put turtles in here. Mm -hmm. This is also great even for hawks, owls, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, for larger animals, obviously you're not going to fit, a, you know, a bobcat or something in there. Any larger animal like that, skunk, fox, raccoon, um, animals that can carry a rabies vector species, you do want to call professionals, you do mm -hmm. want to call a warden because yeah. it is imperative that everyone is safe, both for the people as well as for the animals. Because mm -hmm. if you get bit, laws really state that they have to be euthanized and checked for yep. rabies. Yep. So, right, Miss Oaf? Are mm -hmm. you coming back out again? <laughs> Hi, are you going to forgive me? We Maybe. can go to the woman to get the fledge, our fledge line. Yes. Friend. Oh, I wish you yes. could see this cute little nose can peeking you go out. That yeah. Good. I know you're so mad. You want fish treats? Yeah, I just want to. Can you give? Can you give her treats? I feel bad we for can, her. Oh, she'll go inside. She gets a whole platter of treats. Oh, she gets a and whole so platter. And so she likes to eat. I know. Do you want to go back inside? Oh. Are you mad? It's okay. I understand. Yeah, She's maybe just talking. Here. You want? Can I scooch her? Yeah. Can yeah. I have you bring her in? Ms. <laughs> I understand. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. All right. All right. So now, um, so now we're going to. Uh, so that was a possum, and I don't know about you, but we see lots of possums around here. She's mad. The poor thing. I feel bad, but yet she's. She has strong opinions about lots of things, which is really, really good. Okay. We'd good. like to bring her out to feed her at the end if you want. If people would feel better. <laughs> she'll no, she'll be. Treats. Trust me when I say she'll be. I've learned, behind. you know, by being here at the Center for Wildlife. Um, you know, it's funny when you're not an experienced wildlife person you have all of these reactions that um really are just reflective of your inexperience but it's amazing how i mean you all have been dealing with wildlife and injured animals for years and years and years and you know you know exactly how to treat them you know what's going on and um, they take such good care of their animals here and the ambassador animals are treated like family for mm -hmm. sure they are family. and yeah. uh, they are family exactly yeah. i know i love when when um sarah was talking about the porcupine and she said you know you never want to put the towel over because i thought she was going to say because then you'll get quills in your hand but no this is what i love about them she said you never want to put a towel because it will hurt the porcupine <laughs> It's God a bless thing. you. You want to take over yes. this yeah, thing, yeah. Kristen? Okay, yeah. so then oh, Kristen's going to show, you're going to show us. So this is a fledgling songbird. This is a fledgling robin. And uh, songbirds, a lot of times people are afraid they're going to hurt them or crush them. Yes. Because they're so tiny and delicate. Um, mm -hmm. Even our raptors, you know, our, our red-tailed hawks that look so gigantic they weigh three and a half pounds they have wow. hollow bones um, so people are afraid of that but this is also a fledgling robin this is a um, baby songbird that came in orphaned um, so she is in with several other new foster siblings mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we just borrowed her for a second she'll go back to eating every yep. half an hour and being hand-fed blueberries and worms and will she eventually be released yes oh, yeah that's great. always the goal like you yes. stated um, this year we might hit 2200 yeah. injured and orphan wild animals and the goal is always yeah. to get them back to that's the great. wild that's um, great but sometimes they have permanent injuries or they've been mm -hmm tamed by well-meaning uh, members of the public like Ophelia. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a fledgling robin and I'm going to show you some telltale oh, signs, <laughs> <Cute>. <laughs> which yeah, I should have gotten uh, 
Hey, we can grab a blueberry or something. Uh, but yeah, I'll go get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so oh, we can okay. see that this is a fledgling. Um, do you see the, we call them kind of old man tufts on top of the head? Yes, yes. So that's um, the downy fuzz. So this is typically when they would leave the nest. Um, they Their uh, feathers are kind of stubby, so they're mm -hmm. not long and spelt like adults. Mm -hmm. And um, they really can't fly at all. So this is what we were talking about. You know, as a general rule, if an animal can't fly or get away from you, it might need help, but that kind of goes out the window during nesting season for mm -hmm. babies. So, yeah. um, robins too, I think I love, they have little freckles beautiful. when they're yeah. young. They have um, little beautiful freckles. So, he's learning, or she's learning to perch. Um, so, if you saw one of these on the ground, um, you would definitely just look. You know, she is holding everything perfectly. There's nothing drooping. Her eyes aren't squinty. They're clear. Um, she'll probably beg yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, inside of her mouth. There's no blood or anything, so she's beautiful. So in that case, you would just um, give space and make sure there's no pets, dogs, cats, mm -hmm. um, kids around, loud music, and just make sure parents are coming down to feed. Yeah. Um, this will just be really cute to see okay. how they eat blueberries. Oh, <laughs> so I didn't know they love blueberries, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. No more? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so okay. obliging. Can I take another one? Listen, those are the uh, yeah. wood uh, tree, tree frogs. I hope you all can hear the tree frogs. <laughs> oh, all right. So Beautiful. on this, this bird would be on the ground, um, maybe flapping its wings like this. So you just take your two fingers. This is called a, a banders hold. You just put your after bird banders. So two fingers like this mm -hmm. um, and then you can just hold around the body mm -hmm. and for for most birds um, even with raptors and we'll do that with gloves you want to give them um, that place to have their feet stand, otherwise yep. they're flailing and they feel out of control yep. um, so just giving them that cozy little mm -hmm. <laughs> place to put their feet they feel secure and that's it so Great. you can hold pretty tightly mm -hmm. um, but remember too people are like oh I don't want to hurt the animal but I know um, I was thinking this because I, I, I was going to try it. Well, no, I was going to say yes. Try it. But then, try it. All right, but I'm nervous <laughs> about it because I don't want to hurt it. Oh, well, she uh, says feed me. <laughs> Perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. you're a natural. Yep. Oh, that's easy yeah. enough. So can you can you see her? Look. <laughs> Do you see my old oh, man here? Look. Can you see my old man hair? Look. See little tufts. <laughs> so good looking. Look at that angel. Wow, that's great. So just the two fingers over, and then I'm holding her little mm -hmm. feet. And see how she stops struggling when you get yeah. that firm. Yeah. yeah, totally. So she feels really held by me. You can tell she feels yeah. safe that way. That's yeah. awesome. And yeah. it also protects her from hurting her wings. Exactly. Her so yes. that's the thing. If you're holding them securely, you're keeping yourself safe, but you're keeping them safe too. Yes. So yes. if you were loose and they could flail about and they had an injury, they could really do more damage if you didn't have that's a great. good secure hold like that. Good. So. Thanks, Thank buddy. you. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And I got blueberries. Yeah. All right. Well, so I know we have to wrap up because the time is. What else do we have? We have an owl. <gasps> okay, we have an owl. So <laughs> I'm gonna. We have to. I. I want you to see. This one um, I can do quick. Oh, did you? I hope you saw the bird. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, I know, you know, we're outside and we've got bad weather here. So every now and then it flashes low connection. Um, but hopefully, I'm glad it's coming back on. That's great. I hope you got to see the little bird. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to finish with an owl. I want you to see. Uh, is, this is, oh my God, where do you guys see this? <laughs> mom, I know my mom is on here watching. Mom, mm -hmm. I'm bringing you here. And where do you see this, this owl? So can you come right over here, Absolutely. Sarah, so that you get nice and close so people can see? Yeah. All right, let's see. Look at this little angel. Come here, Lady Willow. Is Look that, at that good looking lady? She says, oh, hi, Cheryl. Hey. How's it going? Hi. She says, I'm a talker. Hi. So Lady Willow is our Eastern Screech Owl Ambassador. You can see she is missing her left eye. She was hit by a car. Oh. Um, so again, if you were to approach a bird like this on the side of the road, you would take the towel, gently throw it over. The thing we tell people to watch for raptors is two things. You want to know where their beak is and you want to know where their feet are. Mm -hmm. And once you have that, you're good to go. So mainly if the towel is covering them, then you know where the head is and that's covered. And then what you would do, can I borrow your feet? I know you're going to be very angry. Good girl. Oh, good job, darling. I know. Okay. I know. Sarah, how long have you been doing this? Uh, since 2000, I yeah, guess. Yeah, so 18 years. Right? I can tell. You're like, hey. 
What are you doing? So you would be holding the wings. Again, if I had the towel over, like I said, I should have. Sure. Um, you'll hold the wings like this and then hold the feet separately. Yep. Then from there, you would take that bird like she was in the towel, put her in the box. Again, don't take the towel off yes. because that's when they fly out. Yep. Um, we would prefer people to wait to take selfies with the bird until later. Yeah, please um, don't take, they just don't, don't take selfies they don't with feel the birds. Good. You wouldn't go into a hospital and take a selfie, so try not to do that. And you can see when she's down, um, look at she's that. down. She says, my name is Willow, and I yeah, am. look at that. We call huh? her a flying pillow of hate sometimes. <laughs> Hi, Willow. She says, I'm very feisty. Hello. Are you yeah. so good? And yeah. so from there, you would bring them in, and then we would um, assess them. I'm going to flip you back up, okay? Yep. Great. So, okay, so again, and I hope you could see. That's great. Oh, and she pooped um, for you. And she pooped. She says, I do that a lot. That's okay. We don't mind. We'll, we'll take a little poop from you. You're okay. beautiful. She says, I poop and pee at the same time. It's very effective. So you you put the towel you would throw, over them. You would approach them, throw the towel over them. Um, she's less accommodating than Ophelia, which is why yeah. we didn't do it. From there, you yeah. can sort of reach around. You're going to be able to feel where the head is and where the feet are. Sure. Keeping the towel over the body, yep. you'll grab the two feet. Yeah. And with then you'll your with your gloved hands, with your gloved not hands. with the bare hands. Sure. I didn't have my right glove. Sure. And then you would put them into the box and be sure to close the box. Yes. Um, and again, resist the temptation to open the box or check yes. or look or do anything like that or open it to show. Yes. Um, resist taking it home to hang out at your house in your kitchen or on your curtains mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, they really, you know, they don't want to be held. It goes against our human nature. As humans, if we see something that's hurt, we want to hold it and grab them. Mm -hmm. um, but that's stressful for them. So yeah. we have to resist the urge to do that and love them enough to give them their space. Yeah. Right, lady? But mm -hmm. if someone hadn't stopped and helped Lady Willow when she was hit by a car, she wouldn't be with yeah, us today. How long so have you had her? She came in 2000. Wow, well, right? she's been yeah, here four years. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and we're in the process of trying to find her an enclosure mate or two. Mm -hmm. Huh, lady? Oh, good. Will you have a friend? Mm -hmm. She says, I would like that. She oh. When she first came, she came with Sir Tufts, uh, or she came to live with Sir Tufts, who was a red morph screech owl. Mm -hmm. So they were pretty good pals. Right, wow. Lady Jean? Mm -hmm. Look she at says, that. Yeah, I'm pretty Look fantastic. Look at that, yeah. Wow. That's her baby call, the chittering noise. So normally they sound like a haunted horse. Um, and we actually have a friend who is a raptor rehabilitator and she came to visit one day and she heard Lady Willow make that noise and was like, I've never heard a screech owl make that noise. So what does that mean, a baby? She came to us when, um, she was a first year baby, so she was oh, a baby when she came in. Okay. She was a first year so bird. So she still has the baby voice is She still saying. has the baby voice. Okay. So oh. when, when we talk, oh, wow. yeah, that's her, that's her talking to us. Oh, and wow. there's only really one, Rob is the only one, um, one of our volunteers does a beautiful uh, screech owl call and he's the only one that she'll answer in her adult voice. Wow. So he oh, is he great. is her chosen person. That's great. Right, thank Lady you. Willow. Thank she you, says, Sarah. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. That's awesome. So Kristen, um I just have as a final question for you. Um so what do we do when is yeah, thank you. That's great. <laughs> thank you. Sit next to me. I love you. Um so how do we um Based on where somebody is, is there like a network of wildlife centers or should we just Google wildlife rehabilitator? Like it's, it's actually, um, wildlife rehabilitators are licensed by the federal and state governments, depending on who they um, treat. Mm -hmm. So um, the way to find a wildlife professional, professional who has their license um, to provide this medical care mm -hmm. is just to go on your fish and game website. So oh, for okay. Massachusetts, it would be Mass Wildlife. Um, New Hampshire is New Hampshire Fish and Game, Maine. Interesting. Inland. So okay. just look for that. And then on that state website, they have a list um, mm -hmm. of all the licensed rehabilitators oh, and great. what species they who take knew? and where they are and what their contact information that's awesome. is. That's yeah. awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. You're Thank welcome. you for what you do. So yeah. if you live anywhere near York, Maine, where we have our retreats twice a year, um, Cape Nettick, Maine, is, which is where they are, if you live anywhere near here, come for a tour. Mm -hmm. They'll give you a Love tour. That. They'll show you what they're doing here. And I'm so excited that I'm going to talk more about this at another time, but They've got um, in the works oh, this right. beautiful 
beautiful center that's going to be that you're breaking ground when um, um looking at the mid to end of july yeah it's mid been... to end of july multi-million dollar wildlife center that will not only provide education and programs and care for animals but will also train rehabilitators mm -hmm. um will educate kids at school about wildlife and the environment and it's it's going to be a pretty special i'm going to tell you more about it mm -hmm. because i'm definitely going to support it and um thanks, Gerald. Yeah, yeah thank you long so time, anyway dream. <laughs> yeah i hope it's a long time dream and it's going to be wonderful so please do me a favor share this video with your friends we all come in contact with wildlife at one time or another and it's so important to be able to take good care of them in the right way so i hope that you'll do that um, share it with people you know, and i um, sorry for the interruptions here and there. Um, that's what happens when you're in the wild, <laughs> and we're in the wild. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Take good care. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.